Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today, uh, we're going to be talking about Road to, Lo Road to Seven Lost Bell 2 campaign because they announced it way earlier than I thought they would. <laughs> so, it will be here tomorrow, uh, which is different from how they did it in JP, because on JP they waited until the current festival was over, and then they did it. So, completely different. So, that's going to be today's video. Let's get right into it for Road to Seven. So, um, this is going to start March 24th, and this is going to be during festival, obviously. Uh, you can see here, four days later, this is when it ends. What's going to be inside the campaign? Well, first of all, uh, there will be a new interlude quest added. Clear Avalon Le Fay, reach 4th Ascension and Bond Level 5, and it's Scotty. And you will get two Sand Quartz from it. And then there will be limited interlude quest open during this time, which is a certain servants and interludes will be available to clear, and you don't need to own them. So if you don't own any of the units that are featured on here, aka Sigurd and Brynhildr, most likely, then make sure to do them, and do them before this goes away, which this will go away on March 31st, so by the end of the month. Um, so yeah, the uh, Sigurds will be open, and his is a regular interlude that's two St. Quartz, and that you need to have cleared Orleans to do. Napoleon's will be open, you need to clear Lost Belt 3. Both of Brunhilde's interludes will be open, and you need to have cleared Solomon and Shinjuku. Uh, for Scotty, you need to have cleared Avalon Le Fay, which is the new one that was just added. And for Valk the Valkyries, you need to have cleared Lost Belt 3 intro, and you'll be able to do them. Um, and then the limited time campaign, two times friend points, EXP, and great and super suck for the following servants. Which are all those servants that are related to Gutter Diamrong. Or Lost Belt 2 as it's more known as. Uh, there you go. And then also one half AP for all Gutter Diamrong free quest. The one half AP for free quest only applies if the first three times the free quest is cleared. From the fourth time onward the AP cost will be a regular one. So keep that in mind. Uh, in terms of game updates, Sigurd will be getting a strengthening. How much, be how much better does that make him? Not enough to be effective in a lot of cases, but it is a buff, and a buff is nice. Um, free access to Brynhildr's trial quest. Players who have cleared Lost Belt 2 can gain access to a trial quest for free. Uh, players who have exchanged for this quest in the past will be refunded via the gift box. And if you do have Sigurd, you can get his nice uh, summer outfit uh, after you've cleared Lost Belt 2. Uh, if you've already bought it, then, or you can get it before then. Uh, but once you clear Lost Belt 2, it becomes free, and you'll be re-gifted the five rare mana prisms that you spent on it. There'll be limited time master missions. Clear Lost Belt 2 free quests one time, two times, three times, three sync quartz, easy enough. The recollection quests are also back, so you can reminisce and remember all the times. Uh, the first one, after you've cleared uh, Lost Belt 2, it will unlock. It's Section 11, Arrow 5, that recollection quest. So once you beat that, the next one will open up will be a super recollection quest, which will be a harder version of the fight. And then Section 12, Arrow 5, uh, recollection quest. And then after you beat that, you unlock the super version, and then Section 16, Arrow 1. And after you beat that, you unlock the harder version. Beating the regular slash easy version will get you a ticket, and then beating the harder version will give you a Stargazer's Teapot. Uh, and yeah, very simple. It's uh, very simple in terms of what's being done here. So now let's go into the not simple part, the summoning campaign. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Uh, over, over, obviously than the big ones. So I'll just go over the quick and dirty for some of the smaller ones. Valkyrie is a very good AoE Lancer. She would probably be the best of the four stars in NA if Parvati did not exist, but Parvati exists and Parvati is better, but that does not mean Valkyrie is bad in any kind of capacity. She is still extremely good. My only wish is that I wish I had her at higher NP copies. <laughs> Because uh, my Parvati is MP5, so if I'm going to use a Lancer for quick, it's likely going to be her. And I only have one copy of the Valkyries. Napoleon's a pretty good AoE archer. Uh, as I talked about Gilgamesh, uh, Napoleon, Tesla, Gilgamesh, and Ishtar are all very solid buster options for AoE. And he continues. He actually gets the benefit of having a 50% NP, though, on his... Uh... No, it's not. It's 30%. Never mind. I thought it was 50% for some reason. Maybe because I was thinking he had the other version of this, which is not that. My bad. He's 30%, but still, solid option. And then I think he also has a bonus 150% damage to 
Divinity enemies. There you go. If you want to take down divine enemies with Napoleon, he's your man. Uh, Sigurd, like I've said, even with this buff, he is still not the greatest unit in the world. He is kind of bad. He is a an anti-dragon, but he's also fighting against Siegfried, who's also anti-dragon. There's so many units in the game that are anti-dragon that it's actually not that amazing of a niche in by in of uh, in it. In of itself, he needs more, and they're going to hopefully start building to more. This was a good start, at least, because um, he gets a 50% buster for three times for three turns, which isn't the greatest, but it's better than what it was previously, which was just 50% buster for one turn. Though, funny enough, if you, if you had, yeah, if you, <laughs> okay, no, it's not possible. Uh, it's a little bit weird, though, for buster performance for three times three turns. I guess that includes NP. I never actually thought about that. But I guess it would. But it's actually possible to get rid of this all in a single turn if you use a full buster. So it's not the most ideal in the world, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say here. He just needs more. Um, just because his niche is not that niche, it turns out. There's plenty of people who give bonus damage to dragons and are better at him at doing it. And one of them even is a saber and is easier to get as well. Uh, Brunhilder, she is a lancer, I believe a single target. If you're looking for someone who's literally trying to hit one of her loved ones, you can find her here. There's plenty of Brunhilda's loved ones in on the list. Um, both men and women, he will, she will gladly take them down as long as she, they meet the criteria for it. Uh, don't know much else about her than that, but she should be solid for that very reason. If you're able to find, if you, there's a specific fight where she, one of the loved ones is an enemy, she'll be perfectly easy perfectly easy she'll be able to clean up pretty easily at least in theory let me know if you actually have Brynhildr I'd be actually interested to know more Setonia is another single target that takes down dragons I believe yes reduces dragons MP but she's different in that she reduces their MP gauge so they can't hit her with um, the MP it's a little bit harder for in that case and she has a little bit more buff towards being able to survive and she's also and alter ego i've actually used Setonia a bunch of times over the the various years that i've had her and i've enjoyed using her every single time the main negative is that being an alter ego and also <laughs> being anti-dragon there's actually not that many dudes that you would typically fight because a lot of dragons are, i think are typically rider i think if i actually look at it because they'll show me Dra we have dragon enemies Mmm, I mean, there's enough to justify it. And then obviously all these dragons as well. And then if the worst comes to worst, you can always just use a George, St. Georgios over here, and you can just turn them into a dragon, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Point being here is that I do use her, and she has been useful for various quests over the time. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to use her as much as I would want her to, as I would want to, but those times where I have made use of her, she's been uh, very effective in what she does. Um... Yeah, and I like her. I think she's cool. And she gives 30% MP. I think it's also possible for... Because she's Anelia, she also gets the Chloe boss, if I remember correctly. There you go. And she's also story luck, so she's kind of a pain in the ass to actually get. And those are the quick and dirty on those... These SSRs. This one SR and these three... These four SSRs. So now let's go on to the actual... Main reason anyone would summon on this, which is going to be Scotty. So we'll devote a little bit more time to Scotty. Scotty, she is a caster. She is two quick, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Primeval Rune. Increases one ally's quick performance for three turns. Increases their critical damage at four quick cards for three turns. 50% quick attack up and then quit, quick, quick crit damage 100%. Second skill is the Shivering Blizzard B, which is all enemies' defense for three turns, reduces their critical attack chance for three turns, 30% and 30%. Uh, third skill is the All Father's Wisdom B, charges one ally's MP gauge, and it's 50% on a cooldown of six. Territory Creation EX, Item Construction A, Goddess Essence A. Her third append skill is an anti caster, because trust no one, not even yourself. And her rank EX Noble Phantasm, which she gets after a strength thing, is the Gate of the Sky, Gate to the Magical Realm Brimming with Death. It's an anti army war declaration Noble Phantasm type, which is rank EX and its arts. Increases party's attack for five turns, increases party's crit damage for three attacks, five turns, grants party evasion for one attack, three turns, grants party instant kill immunity for one time, three turns. 
And MP level 1, the attack up is 20% and the crit damage is 50%. If you get her all the way to MP5, it's 30% attack and 100% crit damage. So by herself, she's actually able to give 200% crit damage, which is pretty funny. And her overcharge effect is reduces party's uh, uh, damage taken for 3 turns. Uh, at uh, first charge, it's 500. And if you get her all the way to the final charge, it's 1,500. If you're curious about what this used to do, it used to not give attack. Um... Yeah, it used to be this version of it. It used to not give crit damage either. Damn, they really... They increased the crit damage. Yeah, the crit damage was insanely buffed. Anyway, that's Scotty. Obviously, Scotty is one of the main components for Quick. She is the current Quick support that we have, but we will be, we'll be getting another Scotty, which is another one that kind of is needs to be brought up because this one is... Also a quick support, but not only that, there is a build coming up which you use double Scotty. So this Scotty is an AoE unit and can be used with Scotty so you can have a full team of Scotty. So if you're a big fan of Scotty and you want nothing but Scotty, or you're a big fan of Skahawk as well, um, then this is literally the perfect build. There's no better, better team here. It's literally just <laughs> three of her. <laughs> Similar to Castoria, when Castoria eventually is able to use it with the, the Berserk Summer version, it's the idealized version of what you've always wanted of Scotty, nothing but Scotty, all Scotty, all day, all night. In terms of what she does for Quick, the only issue that I have with Quick, um, Quick using Quick units is that typically when it comes to farming, a lot of the servants require, first of all, it can be a little bit expensive. It's probably the most expensive of the three currently, I think? Hmm, maybe it's a little bit debate about what, how expensive Buster is, but Arts is likely the cheapest of all of them, just because it's, uh, Castoria is able to carry so many Arts units just on pure NP gain with her skills. Um, Buster, as long as they're able to get their MP to the max level, it should be fine. And for quick, you really need to bust out all the stats possible. And the reason is, is that in the current form of it is that it exists in NA. The MP gain can be a little bit tough for a lot of quick units. The more hits a quick unit can do, the better. But not only that, they need to be able to hit them with the overcharge as well. Um, so it ends up being that a lot of quick units can sometimes not be able to get to the 50% mark. And you need to be able to get to the 50% mark in order to take advantage of the All Father's Wisdom and give 50% back. So assuming that a lot of... It can also be a little bit complicated because not every single quick unit also has a 50% starting NP gauger. Or a 30% if they are also have their second skill locked here. The mana loading. It can. It, it. There's a lot of thought into it. There's. I feel like there's a lot more. I get a little bit by because I have a 100% kaleidoscope, and if you have that, it's able to make a lot of quick farming a lot easier. But it can also mean that a lot of the times, like for example, with Lotto season, they can. Unless you have very specific units, it can sometimes be a little bit hard to grind using fully everything that you have obviously you can make a lot of exceptions to the team build to compensate for that for example oberon being a pretty good example of someone that you can literally just sneak in but if not just oberon you can also use waiver literally anyone to help make up for the fact that you just need that little bit of push at the end um but i guess you can say that for a lot of the other ones i don't know it just feels like it ends up being that quick ends up being a pretty costly investment that doesn't do as much as Buster and Arts do at the moment. I'm really curious to see how much... I don't think Ruler Scotty really changed it all that much on the JP side, but I'm still going to be using her when she comes out. Assuming I'm able to get her, that is. <laughs> I should maybe preface that a little bit and say, let's assume that I'm actually able to get them. Um, yeah, I'm going to be real curious to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I like Scotty, and if you want to use any specific quick units, she can be really good at that. She's a little bit better. She's also pretty solid when it comes to challenge quests. I had a specific video go up, um, many times ago. The last time we had this, the challenge quest go up, and I said, you know, Scotty, I always, for the many years, talked crap about how much I didn't think that this NP was very good. But then actually using it in a challenge quest instead of just pure farming, it opened my eyes. And I was like, okay, I've been wrong this entire time. Uh, <laughs> this is actually a very good Noble Phantasm, and they've only made it better since then. So I think she has like a little bit 
more even though this one seems like there's not a lot going on and it can seem like a little bit like hey what 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 does all this really come up to the fact that this reduces critical attack chance is can be very clutch in a lot of specific challenge quest fights or a lot of uh boss fights just means that you won't be critted into oblivion and then it also reduces their defense on top so this can also be used both defensively and offensively um either for farming or for some more challenge quest type scenarios the obviously the crit damage is never going to help you out when you're farming but it is going to help you big time when you're actually fighting someone and i can say for a fact because i've used scotty with skahawk before once you got two Scotties up in the mix, and then you increase her so she does, she does 200% crit <laughs> crit damage on it, you can really put in a lot of damage. It turns out if you give 200% crit damage to something, you can do a lot of damage with it. That's <laughs> what I've found. And because crit, uh, Quick is so good at um, getting crit stars, you will be able to take advantage of it unless you're using some of the jankiest Quick units thought to man. But yeah, that's Scotty. I think Scotty is a really cool unit. I think she's worth having. Uh, she did def, def she definitely carried me when that quick meta came in. It was a meta that I vastly enjoyed, especially after coming off of the Merlin Buster meta, which I did not enjoy very much. I was a big fan of looping and doing a bunch of cool things with a bunch of uh, quick units. And the only thing that makes me sad is that I just wish Quick was at a more even keel to arts or buster but that's how i currently feel if you have a different opinion about how quick currently is feel free to tell me but i definitely feel like quick is currently probably the one that needs the most help in terms of actual supports um because arch just has um castoria and then a couple of other side options that are also very solid and buster has the advantage of oberon is kind of built for them and Vich is able to give a minus two, is able to make up for what Merlin didn't have. And then for challenge quest, you have Merlin and stuff like that. So I think, end up thinking that Quick just needs a little bit more help. Not to say that it's bad at all. I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just wish it was better. I think, is it, does that make sense? Is it weird to say something's good, but you just want it to be better? <laughs> <laughs> maybe it shows a bias of how much i really like quick that i just wish quick was that much better so i could use a lot more of my quick units like i've mentioned before dantes is like one of my favorite units and it does make me a little sad that i don't use him as much as i used to in the past just because i don't really see the need to use quick all that often when it's much easier to use buster or arts over them and i have to make a little bit more th thoughts and <laughs> do stuff when it comes to quick but anyway, that's enough talking about that. I wish you all the best of luck if you decide to go for Scotty. I know plenty of people were going to Scotty. It really sucks that this is showing up early. Uh, so you have less time to actually prepare for Scotty than thought previously. So let's look and see how the sum, the, the order of it's going to be. So Scotty's going to be here from the 24th to the 27th, and then she goes away. So you have basically four days to actually summon for Scotty and potentially get her. Other than that, if you miss it, it's gone. Because next is Brynhildr. And then it's Sigurd. And then it's Napoleon. And then it ends with Setonia. So kind of keep that in mind as you go through it. Uh, funny enough, on Wednesday, there's going to be four banners up. That's funny. There's going to be so many banners up now that I think about it. Because these four are still going to be up. And then there's still going to be the ones related to um, Battle in New York. Which is funny. But yeah. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I am very burnt out from work, but I will hopefully get to recording pretty soon. And I'm looking forward to that. Until next time, I wish you guys the best, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Best of luck on your summons if you go for it.